Hello to all. I am Karina, and along with my colleague Sergio Anglo, we are a professor from University of São Paulo, and we will coordinate this section with the lecture of Professor Annette Miller. Uh, she is an international reference on the topic of recycling of built materials. I would like to thank you all for being here, and mostly to Professor Annette to give her time to be with us. It's certainly an honor for us to be with her. Welcome and uh, have a very good presentation, Annette. Okay, then I will start my presentation. It is named uh, Recycling of Building Materials, a Differentiation According to the Type of Material and the Particle uh, Size. Uh, here um, is the content of my uh, presentation. Uh, at first, uh, something about tools for waste management, uh, classification and uh, uh, amount of uh, construction demolition which is generated. Then uh, the topic recycling of concrete. There are uh, different uh, uh, solutions available road construction or aggregate in concrete, uh, but we uh, have uh, a problem with the fine fractions. So how shall we use this uh, fine fractions? And the fifth and last point is the recycling of masonry that is more difficult than the recycling of uh, concrete. We have some uh, solution, but I think we need uh, uh, further research, uh, uh, especially in this uh, topic. Okay. Uh, the classification of uh, construction and demolition waste. Uh, this term construction and uh, demolition waste is an umbrella term for a very uh, wide range of different uh, uh, material. The common uh, 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 the thing is uh, that these uh, materials uh, are generated by any construction uh, activities. Uh, we have um, at least three categories, uh, soil and rock, uh, that is not real uh, uh, building material and therefore it is uh, very uh, different uh, from point to point or from location to location and um, the uh, rates of recycling are uh, rather low. Then we have uh, the waste that um, is generated from uh, total or partial demolition of buildings. That is the second uh, uh, picture in this uh, row and um, it the uh, composition depends of the type of building. Uh, if you demolish a, a street, then you have rather homogeneous material. If you uh, demolish a building, a, a residential building, then you have very mixed material. And the last uh, category is a, a base that uh, is generated during the erection of new uh, buildings or uh, in the, during the maintenance of old buildings. Uh, the last uh, picture in this row, that is a very old uh, building, as you see, and it is nevertheless uh, renovated. Mm. Okay. Uh, the classification in Europe is according to the European based uh, catalog. That is a catalog for all wastes, not only uh, construction and demolition waste, but also household waste and so on, or uh, waste from mining and uh, other kinds of waste. And in this uh, catalog, there are in, uh, together 839 uh, kinds of uh, waste. Uh, yes, it, uh, is the construction and demolition waste is in chapter 19. 17 with uh, nine subgroups and altogether 28 uh, non hazardous uh, kinds of waste. The first is excav uh, excavated 
uh, soil an example is uh, in the uh, first uh, picture uh, that can be soil and stones as, as that can be dragon uh, spoil or also track ballast. Uh, construction uh, rubble from uh, road uh, construction demolition uh, is, uh, is the next type. It, um, here you see the example of uh, bituminous uh, mixtures. Uh, then the uh, demolition rubble uh, that can be a, a rather pure material, for instance, uh, concrete or clay bricks, but mostly it is a mixture. Uh, you see it in the uh, picture, uh, uh, the last picture on the right. Uh, it is a mixture of concrete, brick, ceramics, and uh, you have also connected uh, materials. For instance, there's a white parts uh, that is a, a connection between, uh, uh, between calcium silica brick and clay brick. Uh, and that is the uh, largest uh, challenge for uh, recycling. Uh, then we have so-called mixed site debris. Uh, that uh, in this group there are not only uh, uh, anorganic uh, building materials, but also wood, plastics, insulation uh, material, and so on. Uh, this material is mostly um, collected in containers. The uh, uh, picture on the top is a, a German example. As the picture on, uh, on the right side is an example from Sao Paulo. And um, nowadays uh, uh, in Germany, uh, we also collect uh, the gypsum uh, debris uh, separately, especially uh, uh, the uh, gypsum uh, plasterboards. Then we have possibility uh, to uh, uh, process and uh, reuse it uh, separately. But that is uh, just in the be beginning. Uh, I think today we have two uh, factories for processing of selected uh, gypsum uh, plasterboard. Uh, here um, I show you uh, the application of the waste uh, numeric codes on a standard uh, building. And uh, you can um, give all the uh, materials which um, uh, are used in such a building, uh, uh, such numeric uh, codes, but the portions in which this material uh, is generated are rather different. Uh, we have materials with portions between 10 and 100 percent, that is concrete and brick, then uh, materials between uh, 1 and 10 percent, uh, that is uh, plaster and uh, uh, gypsum, wood and steel, uh, uh, materials with portion between 0 0.1 and uh, 1 mass percent glass and PUC, and uh, in very low portions, uh, plastic paintings, electric cable, uh, this uh, uh, building. Okay, uh, now uh, something um, short remarks on the amount of. Uh, 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 demolition waste uh, that is uh, generated in Germany and in Europe, the amount um, is um, yes, or uh, our uh, standard office uh, makes a collection of this uh, values. And uh, in Germany, we have an amount of uh, construction and demolition waste of uh, 87 million tons per year. That means about uh, 0 0.9 to 1 ton per capita and year. But the uh, most uh, 
um, of this material is uh, or uh, besides this real uh, construction and demolition waste, uh, we have uh, 108 uh, million tons of excavated uh, soil. Uh, in Europe, um, altogether uh, 850 million tons shall uh, be generated. Uh, and uh, the uh, amount, the specific amount per capita has uh, a broad scattering, as you see in this uh, uh, graph. It is between 0 0.02 for Romania and 1.8 ton per capita and here for uh, United Kingdom. Okay, and if I see such differences, I always try to bring a little bit system in this confusion and that is the next uh, slide. Uh, here I have uh, uh, tried to um, find a connection between uh, population density uh, in the different countries and the amount of uh, the sp uh, specific amount of uh, uh, construction and demolition waste and you see up to a population density of about 500 there is a nearly a linear increase of this amount and then uh, uh, range uh, follows with uh, the tendency to uh, saturation. Uh, very overcrowded regions like uh, Hong Kong, they have of course a very high uh, a specific amount of uh, construction and demolition waste. Okay, that is this uh, uh, point here. Next, uh, so that was a chapter on uh, generation uh, of construction and demolition waste now uh, on recycling. Start, we start with the uh, uh, recycling of uh, concrete. You can use it in base courses for uh, road construction. Um, uh, here I uh, show you the both possibilities uh, of base uh, course, uh, courses. That is a, a, a frost protection layer and then follows the bearing base uh, course and this uh, uh, upper courses there we cannot use recycled materials, only this goes. And we have requirements on the material uh, that is a composition, the so particle size the pro, uh, distribution, uh, grain strength and uh, frost resistance. That is a uh, picture of a motorway and my husband tried to make a a picture from uh, uh, during our uh, yes driving at this motorway it's uh, rather difficult to uh, get a very <laughs> good uh, picture okay and uh, that uh, this slide shows the requirements on the composition uh, versus the values um, i have selected from uh, quality uh, control pro uh, pro protocols. Such protocols are uh, viable uh, level in the web. And the green uh, marked uh, materials that are the materials which are wished. They are, this material are uh, good for the use in uh, base uh, courses. And the red marked uh, materials, um, they are, yes, uh, uh, not so good for base causes and therefore the um, amount, the uh, allowed amount is rather low. One example is uh, gypsum in this uh, base cause material. Uh, it shall be uh, uh, only in, or it must be in a very low percentage of zero point uh, five uh, mass uh, percent. Uh, 
if you uh, can see from the values from quality uh, control, um, it uh, seems to be no problem to uh, fit these uh, requirements. The second is the particle size uh, distribution uh, that is also uh, easy. Uh, the requirements are not so strong. We, uh, strong. we have a broad uh, range uh, of uh, uh, possible particle um, size uh, distributions. For instance, the content of uh, material four millimeters it can be between 15 and let's say 80 percent. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, the values from quality con of the quality control show that we are uh, in this uh, range. Uh, one critical point is this uh, content of uh, particles lower than 0 0.063. Uh, they shall not be higher than uh, 5 uh, mass uh, percent. That is an uh, uh, important uh, factor. The next uh, is the grain strength. Um, here I have collected values of uh, different uh, building materials and also of um, natural uh, aggregate. And as you see, uh, the uh, Los Angeles coefficient, that means the uh, amount of undersized uh, particles is uh, uh, lower in the case of uh, natural uh, aggregates compared with uh, recycled uh, aggregates. The reason is the density. Um, the lower the density, uh, the higher the uh, Los uh, Angeles uh, uh, coefficient. Um, this uh, picture is one of the uh, reasons why we uh, did not uh, 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 or why it is not allowed to use uh, recycled uh, aggregates in uh, uh, highways and so on. That means in uh, uh, streets that uh, must carry a, a high load of uh, uh, traffic. Okay. As, as, uh, the same is uh, in the case of uh, frost resistance. Uh, there is also a rather uh, diffuse uh, in, uh, dependence between uh, particle uh, density and portion of undersized uh, particles. Uh, and uh, here are the natural aggregates, and this field is for the uh, recycled aggregates. And you uh, see, uh, especially the Bricks have a very broad field. That means uh, here that are hard burned bricks and that are uh, soft burned uh, bricks. And um, nowadays it is allowed to have uh, some uh, brick uh, in this material for base uh, uh, courses because it is not right to say brick are bad in each, uh, uh, in each quality. Okay, uh, now uh, something about the experience uh, which I gained over uh, 40 years for the use of uh, recycled materials in uh, road construction. The field of application is the main field uh, for uh, uh, crushed concrete so far. Uh, and we have a very famous example that is the Aden's Expressway in Chicago. Uh, it was reconstructed in 1978 and is under, uh, uh, under traffic uh, up till now. It works. Uh, but it is only pure uh, concrete, uh, what was taken from the old uh, uh, expressway and crushed and used in the new. Uh, uh, expressway. Uh, in Germany, we have uh, some results uh, of examinations on base uh, courses. 
which uh, was um, used for two decades. Uh, the um, result is that we have an increase of load capacity and a decrease of uh, water uh, permeability during this uh, service life. Uh, both may be the uh, same uh, reason that means the uh, 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 generation of uh, calcit in this um, uh, material and this calcit uh, results in, uh, uh, in an increase of the uh, density of the material. Uh, there is one uh, limit for the use of crushed concrete for a road construction. Uh, you shall not use this material in soils that contains sulfates because then uplift can occur uh, due to uh, etringite formation. Uh, in the former times, in the first times of use um, of recycled aggregate in road uh, construction, uh, this uh, mistake was often done and then you have, um, uh, yes, the uh, uh, road is uh, destroyed after, uh, after some uh, uh, winter periods. The special advantage of, of this use of uh, road uh, construction, uh, in road construction, is uh, the reduction of transport costs you use the material uh, on site and uh, you can uh, use uh, also uh, CO2 emissions um, because uh, the uh, distances uh, to uh, of uh, transports uh, become smaller. The next point is the recycling of concrete as recycled aggregate in uh, concrete. There are also research over, uh, over decades and now um, we have little um, uh, progresses. The fields of application for, um, for recycled aggregates uh, are uh, residential, social and commercial uh, buildings. It is not so uh, suitable for uh, industrial or uh, agricultural buildings and also not so suitable for uh, engineering structures. You can use it uh, in ex external walls, in uh, internal uh, walls, load bearing or not load bearing, in stair, staircase, in basement walls, uh, foundation, uh, and cleanliness uh, layer, floor plate. I think that is enough to um, consume all the recycled uh, aggregates uh, which uh, are uh, available. We can distinguish between two types of recycled aggregates. Uh, first is so-called uh, concrete recycled aggregates. There the brick content is limited to 10 mass then the second type is mixed uh, recycled uh, aggregate. Uh, the brick content is uh, lower than uh, 30 or must be lower than 30 mass percent. And in both cases, it is not allowed to use the um, particles uh, with diameters lower two millimeters. Uh, therefore, here is uh, written 2 to uh, 16, uh, that means that is the particle size. We have requirements on the composition, the sulfate uh, content and the chloride content, the particle size uh, distribution and the density and water uh, absorption. Let us look at this uh, requirements. At first, uh, 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 the composition, uh, we have uh, the allowed materials in green, that is uh, concrete, masonry, uh, 
uh, blocks of concrete, not uh, brick, and uh, hydraulically bond aggregates. Soil, rock, and gravel is also allowed, and clay bricks, uh, silica, uh, calcium silica bricks, and not floating aerated autoclave concrete, but only in the in a small um, amount for the type one and in a higher amount for the type uh, two. And we again, we can fulfill this uh, requirements in a, a technical scale. Uh, it is not allowed uh, to have asphalt granulate in the uh, material uh, glass and this broad group, uh, group of uh, other materials are uh, allowed in maximum up to 2% and it is not a uh, uh, problem to uh, fulfill this uh, limit. And floating material uh, that mm, shall not be uh, in a mass or not in a mass, in a volume of uh, not more than uh, the uh, two uh, cubic uh, centimeter per uh, kilogram. Okay, we, that is the composition that we have to fulfill and that we can fulfill. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, now the other requirements, uh, the uh, suitable uh, uh, chloride, sulfate and so on. Uh, there are strong limits, uh, but uh, the values from the quality control show that we can uh, fulfill this limit. Then uh, there is a limit of uh, particle density and water absorption, but I think, uh, I don't know if, it, uh, if you understand my word, it is a toothless tiger. It is too low uh, to make any classification. Uh, particle density of uh, 2000 um, is achieved uh, nearly uh, of all uh, building materials. Yes, not of uh, aerated autoclave uh, concrete, but uh, of other uh, or other uh, mineralic uh, building materials. Okay. And uh, the same for uh, for uh, water absorption. So uh, there is also a, a requirement on freeze thaw resistance. Uh, yes, and you see that cannot be uh, fulfilled in uh, all cases. But uh, experience uh, show that uh, concrete with the recycled aggregates. Uh, have a rather good uh, freeze thaw resistance. I think it is a question of the additional porosity uh, that porosity um, generates uh, rooms uh, for the uh, volume uh, increase uh, during uh, freezing. Uh, the uh, the uh, requirements of the uh, uh, amount that I can uh, substitute and uh, allowed uh, strength classes and uh, the application uh, conditions, all these requirements follow the uh, philosophy uh, mm -mm, uh, that uh, our concrete uh, must not differ from normal concrete. That is uh, the uh, philosophy over the whole building, let's say, and that is um, guaranteed or can be guaranteed if the uh, amount of recycled aggregate in the new concrete is not higher than 45%. Um, and I mentioned already uh, uh, it is also not allowed to use uh, fine recycled aggregate with diameters uh, lower than two millimeters. 
we can use this uh, recycled aggregates in concrete up to strength classes of C32, uh, uh, 37. And uh, I think that is more than enough because the portion of uh, this uh, strength classes up to uh, uh, 30, 37, uh, that is the amount of uh, concrete is 80, uh, 15%. And I think the recycled material that is uh, uh, available, yes, if we can produce 10 to, 10 to 15 percent of uh, concrete with recycled aggregates. I think it is not more. Uh, the design of uh, concrete with recycled aggregates is uh, like normal concrete. Uh, uh, that is this uh, uh, philosophy, no uh, differences. And we can use it in exposure classes with low or moderate a risk of corrosion and attack. And that is a very important uh, point. No alkali silica test is required if the cement content is lower than uh, 350 uh, kilogram. And that is not difficult to realize such a content. If you use 340, uh, a kilogram um, uh, per cubic meter, it is mostly uh, enough for the low uh, uh, strength classes, and so you do not need such uh, alkali silica tests. Uh, here, you in the table, you see uh, the uh, replacement amount uh, uh, more in detail, and of course, uh, for the uh, type two, the uh, replace, uh, re replacement level is uh, lower than for the type one. Okay. Now I will show you some examples uh, for a concrete with recycled aggregates and some experience during the last, let's say, 15 years. Uh, there is no or only a low impact on the consistency and the compressive strength of uh, the uh, concrete. The modulus of uh, elasticity is slightly lower. I have explained that in my uh, book because the amount of cement paste is higher in uh, uh, concrete with the recycled aggregate, we have the actual uh, content of uh, cement paste and the old uh, content of uh, cement paste and uh, the uh, uh, cement paste um, is not so, or is more deformable uh, than uh, the uh, aggregates. We have uh, one advantage of concrete with recycled aggregates that is a better uh, uh, quality of the surface. You can uh, produce uh, uh, architectural uh, concrete with this uh, material. In Germany, we have two hotspots of application of such arc concretes. That is uh, the urban uh, uh, areas around Stuttgart. There, the story of recycling concrete uh, starts and nowadays also the uh, area around Berlin. Here uh, on the left side you see uh, a waiting, I don't know, house uh, and the columns are made of uh, concrete uh, of 100% uh, recycled aggregates. Um, that is not in the, uh, allowed in the, in the standards but uh, the uh, client uh, wants such uh, examples because that is the entrance of a, a factory for paper recycling. And here an example from uh, 2017, that is the so-called competence center 
of the company uh, face in also near Stuttgart and face uh, was a pioneer of uh, recycling or was the pioneer uh, of recycling in uh, Germany. Uh, now, uh, uh, examples from Berlin uh, in 2014, uh, uh, the research uh, and laboratory uh, building of the Charité, that is the famous uh, hospital in uh, Berlin, was erected with recycled uh, concrete. Uh, here you uh, see the placing of the art concrete uh, uh, and that is a, the diaphragma ball which is uh, produced at first and that is a supporting or a bearing uh, structure of this building. And now we have a new name for concrete with recycled aggregates. Uh, we uh, say R concrete and our concrete means uh, uh, resources uh, saving concrete. That is more up to date than concrete with recycled aggregate. Maybe it helps uh, in uh, the use of this uh, concrete. As a, um, as a last uh, picture, I uh, show you two examples of school buildings and this left one uh, is a school uh, which, uh, which was bu uh, built already 2005 in Zurich and there uh, uh, 5,000 cubic meter of uh, uh, architectural concrete was um, manufactured and I show this slide already in uh, Sao Paulo in a lecture in 2006. And now we have also such an uh, example in Germany. That means 15 years. We need 15 years to learn. And uh, that is a, a, a school in Berlin, very nice name, Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, here is, uh, uh, they use uh, 2,500 cubic meter of concrete also for um, uh, architectural uh, uh, concrete. Okay, uh, we are a li little bit slower, but now I think uh, step by step we have learned. Um, yes, uh, I mentioned already that uh, we cannot use a fine fraction in the uh, cement factoring and therefore we have to find uh, uh, ways for the uh, <coughs> or methods for the uh, use of this material because the fine fraction can uh, generate it during the crushing in a percentage of let's say 20 to 40 uh, percent and that is too much uh, for um, bring it to a uh, uh, landfill uh, site. Uh, first option is, is uh, to use the hardening potential, uh, potential of uh, the non mutilated uh, cement constituents in this sand. Second uh, is to use filler effects of the ground sand. Uh, third is the activation of the hydraulic uh, potential of the sand through a thermal treatment and the last point is to use this sand as raw material component in the production of Portland cement clinker. Let's uh, look at the first uh, option. Uh, yes, there is a, a hardening potential is only detectable uh, by very, very young uh, concrete, maybe one day. Uh, or, of course, uh, uh, in uh, concrete with very low uh, water cement uh, ratio or such things. But normally, we do not uh, find uh, a technical usable hardening uh, uh, potential in the uh, sand. 
the use of the uh, filler effect there we have uh, uh, done experiments uh, i think in the yes you see the date of the uh, of the publication that was 2010 to 2012 and we have to uh, we have uh, milled this sand and then uh, substituted a part of the cement by this sand. And I have uh, tried to uh, bring this uh, uh, values on the compressive strength in this diagram. And there is a nice uh, presentation or a nice publication of Sur. And uh, he distinguished uh, between three effects. Uh, if the uh, material has uh, no, nothing hardening uh, potential, then you have only a dilution effect. That is a black line. If the material is fine enough, then it can have a filler effect. And if the um, uh, material takes place in the hydration uh, reaction, then we have this uh, green uh, uh, line or this green uh, curve. And you see if the material is rather coarse, a medium uh, a particle size of 20 uh, microns, then there is only a dilution effect. If it is rather uh, fine, uh, uh, a medium particle size of two uh, microns, then it can, uh, then it is maybe uh, there is a, a small uh, uh, filler uh, effect because uh, or the uh, compressive strength shows a, a little increase in direction of uh, filler effect. But um, uh, the finest fraction of uh, recycled aggregates are mostly. Uh, uh, quartz sand and um, the, um, the grinding of uh, quartz sand needs a lot of energy and I don't know um, if this is the uh, uh, right way uh, for the re reuse of the sand. Okay, the third possibility was the activation of hydraulic potential of the sand through a, a thermal uh, uh, treatment. And here we come a little bit to uh, chemistry of cement. Uh, on the right side, you see the uh, so-called ranking uh, diagram, which uh, was developed for uh, Portland cement. And uh, I, you see in the left uh, side, yes, this, there is a, I cannot, see it with uh, the pointer to you. There is a field of uh, Portland cement and uh, in the right uh, tree plot you see uh, the points for concrete rubble. They are more or less in the SEO2 uh, 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 edge of the uh, diagram. The crosses is uh, mechanically treated uh, a concrete uh, rubble, it is a little bit better than uh, the untreated rubble. And then you see allied, uh, allied and belied and Portland cement, but we are far away from this um, material and we cannot expect uh, uh, that uh, there are a lot of uh, hydraulic uh, components are uh, formed that uh, becomes uh, or is confirmed by the next uh, uh, results. Uh, uh, pure cement paste uh, uh, where uh, he, uh, thermal treated at different temperatures. Uh, the, uh, at the top, and what is in, uh, the opposite of the top of, at the bottom of the uh, diagram there is a pure uh, cement paste only 
we see only uh, calcium hydroxide as crystalline uh, phase. And then oh, this phase is treated at a different temperature. And at the top, there is uh, the uh, XRD uh, plot for the uh, original uh, cement. And um, you see, we have some uh, by uh, formation of uh, belight at temperatures of 900 uh, centigrade, but we have a lot of lime that is uh, named with C uh, in this material. That means we have a mixture between a, a hydraulic uh, component and a quick lime. And how to use this material? We need already. 1,400 centigrade to come back to the original phase composition of the uh, cement. I think this uh, thermal treatment uh, is also not um, uh, suitable for use the uh, sand fraction. Maybe this 600 degree material uh, has any chance, uh, chance for uh, reuse, but that is uh, another field or must be field of uh, a topic for research. Uh, then the last uh, possibility for reuse uh, the mm, cement uh, or the sand, and uh, here uh, I checked the. Uh, Use as raw material component in uh, cement uh, clinker. Uh, that was a development uh, what was carried out in the University of Delft. And I think that is also uh, not possible. Uh, we uh, make a lot of processing uh, to. Uh, recover a fine uh, fraction uh, and this fine fraction has a CO2 uh, content of uh, 35.2 mass percent. If I want to use this uh, uh, fine fraction as a component uh, for the Portland cement clinker production, I have to add it to a very high quality uh, limestone uh, to achieve at least uh, the required component, uh, composition of a Portland cement clinker. I need a calc and a lime uh, a standard of uh, life, and maybe I can use 15% of this. Uh, fine fraction and 40, uh, uh, 85 percent of uh, the uh, high quality limestone. Of course, I have no reduction of uh, CO2 emission uh, because mm, I think this fine uh, uh, fraction uh, uh, is carbonatized. Yeah, suddenly uh, uh, and. Uh, we put only uh, uh, carbonate to our um, uh, raw material. So as I think we need new ideas uh, for the recycling of the uh, fine fractions. One is to use it as raw material for autoclave products like calcium silica brick or autoclave uh, aerated concrete. There are some research uh, work uh, and, and this, um, this research works bring hope that it is an, uh, um, a way for reuse or we try an upgrading of the sand and use it then in the uh, concrete uh, production. Uh, Upgrading can be the reduction of cement paste content by a special uh, treatment. Or that is um, another idea, the uh, utilization of the rapid uh, CO2 uptake of the CH8 and the 
H and CSH phases of the sands to uh, densify the uh, microstructure. I think that can work and maybe it uh, happens already at the storage places of uh, the recycling companies. So now the uh, last point, the recycling of masonry, it's a shorter point. Um, uh, remember uh, our page five, we have uh, two types of masonry, uh, rubble. Uh, first type is pure tile and clay brick rubble. And sec uh, second type is a mixture of concrete, brick, tile, ceramics, and so on. But the amount or the quantity of pure uh, uh, material is very low uh, compared with the amount uh, of uh, mixtures. Uh, but of course, with sorting technologies, we can uh, recover pure materials from this uh, uh, mixtures. And therefore, I think we need developments for both types of uh, waste uh, for the mixture as well as for the pure materials. Uh, the objective is clear to increase uh, the level and rate of this, uh, um, of the rec uh, recycling of uh, masonry rubble. Uh, so far, masonry rubble can use only for filling and so on, or it is uh, it goes to the deposit. Uh, we one uh, possibility to use this mixed material as raw material for lightweight aggregates. This uh, research has a long tradition in Weimar. It starts already in 2000, and the first uh, uh, international paper. Um, was in 2002 in uh, CIB publication, uh, the Congress was in Karlsruhe. And the last uh, international paper was in 2019, it was a Congress in Hanoi. That was nicer than in Karlsruhe. Oh, so, and what is uh, happened since 2019, that is the successful production in a pilot plant. I will uh, show you very short this um, pilot plant, or at first the, pro the uh, production of lightweight uh, aggregates uh, from uh, masonry rubble. We uh, need at first, of course, uh, pre-crushing, for instance, by a, a, a jaw crusher, then a grinding in a ball mill, and we add an expanding agent. Uh, then uh, mixing and sizing uh, follows. And uh, the last step is a thermal uh, treatment in a rotary kiln. And then uh, we uh, uh, have as product expanded aggregates, lightweight aggregates. Okay, uh, here you see is a, a rotary kiln that we uh, have a wider level that nearly two years at the uh, institute. Uh, is, it has a diameter of uh, 600 millimeter, a length of uh, six meter and 300 millimeters, uh, a refractory concrete lining, a throughput about between 10 and uh, 100 kilogram per hour. It is heated with natural gas. The standard uh, temperature is uh, 1250. Maybe we can also uh, achieve a maximum temperature uh, of 1500, but that's not so good for the lining. Uh, that is uh, uh, one picture of uh, uh, yes, this uh, um, uh, rotary kiln or more 
uh, of the uh, whole uh, equipment uh, and also for uh, the material and that is the result of one uh, weak burning of lightweight uh, aggregate in this uh, here only is a discharge i don't know if it works uh, of the fired uh, uh, granulates, it's like a little bit like uh, the uh, no good. It is a little bit uh, like uh, uh, in the in metallurgic processes, very hot and okay. Uh, something about the. Uh, the properties of this materials um, left we use masonry rubble uh, right we use uh, pure big brick rubble uh, that are the uh, produced uh, lightweight aggregates and the first test on the density um, uh, of this uh, um, uh, aggregates is uh, uh, is always a, let's say the swimming uh, test uh, if the aggregates uh, are on the surface of the water, then the density is lower than one. Uh, more in detail here, the, uh, the properties uh, from both uh, uh, different raw material, uh, the properties uh, from the granulates from masonry uh, rubble are uh, a little bit uh, uh, wronger than the properties of uh, the brick rubble uh, granulates, but I think uh, we have, let's say, intern level uh, or intern limit of density of uh, one gram per cubic uh, centimeter, and mostly we can uh, uh, fulfill this limit. Uh, the uh, grain strength, okay, uh, of course, there is lower if the material has a lower density, but it is in the same order, like for instance, uh, lightweight aggregate produced from uh, clay. Uh, the application of the, uh, the produced lightweight aggregates can be uh, thermal insulations. Uh, uh, as fill or as uh, panels, uh, lightweight aggregates for concrete, uh, also uh, the special kind of concrete, the so called gradient concrete road construct, uh, construction on uh, uh, low uh, ground uh, or on ground with no bearing capacity or is another field of uh, application and also the hydroponic uh, cultivation uh, is a, a, a possibility of use of this uh, recycled aggregate. What are the next steps? That is a bridge between uh, or to overcome this death valley between uh, knowledge and market. At first, we have uh, to summarize all the laboratory results we have available. That is my part. Uh, and then you know, we have more detailed determination of the technological parameters, burning temperature, needed residence time, heat consumption. And uh, for this uh, things, we can use this pilot plan. Then we have to uh, manufacture uh, uh, various products in, uh, in an uh, amount that is uh, enough for broader application. And then we have to do test series for companies uh, with the hope that one of the companies uh, uh, use our technology. Okay, but I think that is a way for some years. Um, now, very short, the 
the use of uh, recycled uh, brick or of brick rubble uh, as raw material for the uh, uh, production of uh, brick. It is known that uh, own poor, uh, pure bricks uh, rejects which are generated during the manufacturing of a brick can be used as a raw mill uh, substitute, as a partial raw mill uh, substitute uh, in the uh, brick production. And now we have tr uh, tried to transfer uh, this uh, knowledge to recycled bricks. Um, and we have considered the following influences. The, mm, uh, the raw material uh, which is used and the product uh, which shall be manufactured. That is uh, the first uh, influence. Then the particle size of the reticulates and the content of foreign matter. And uh, here um, you see the uh, fraction two to four millimeter that we have used uh, as a raw material substitute. Uh, we um, burn the uh, uh, material, that means the uh, mass added with uh, the recycling material uh, in a gas uh, heated uh, muffle furnace. And we have uh, three types of raw material. We have a, 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 yes, a, a lime free clay that is used for uh, production of roofing tiles. That is a very high quality uh, clay. Then we have a pirate uh, containing clay for heartburn uh, bricks and then more a low level quality uh, uh, brick for uh, hollow brick, uh, bricks that uh, contains a lot of uh, carbonate. Uh, after burning, we uh, determined uh, some technological properties. And I show you only one uh, example. Uh, the, uh, we found a decrease of the strength with increasing amount of uh, foreign substances and increasing amount of uh, substitution. Now I've tried to summarize both influences in a substitution parameter or such a thing. And that is the definition of this uh, parameter, as is, uh, it is the loss of ignition of the substitute and the percentage of the substitution and um, uh, divided. The assumption uh, behind this uh, definition is that the loss of ignition represents in any way the foreign matter content of the uh, substitute, uh, yes, either if it is organic uh, material or it is clay uh, containing, no, nickel, uh, clay uh, containing material, yes, lime containing, sorry, I mean lime containing material. Uh, the measured values you uh, see in the, in the diagram. Uh, if the substitution parameters increase, the flexor strength decrease. Mm, that means uh, the assumption is not so uh, uh, wrong, but I think we need uh, improvement. Uh, and uh, then we can describe this uh, dependence uh, uh, better. Or yes, we need uh, we have then a stronger uh, dependence. Uh, that is all on the uh, recycling uh, of uh, brick rubble in uh, the clay brick uh, production. And the last point is uh, the use of brick powders as porcelanic additives in the cement production. Uh, in Germany and Europe, and I hope all over the uh, world, uh, we have uh, the following uh, uh, situation. 
uh, now we use flyers as uh, additive or addition in cement and concrete, but uh, we expect a decrease of the fly ash uh, due to the decreasing of fossil fuels uh, for power generation. And therefore we have to look at uh, other uh, materials which can be used uh, as, uh, uh, as addition or as additional cementitious material. Uh, there are a lot of research on this field. Uh, there are residues from industrial processes and slugs and petrochemical catalysts and byproducts from various combustion processes of organic matter. Then there is uh, research on uh, calcinated clay uh, and only a small uh, amount of research on brick powders as uh, uh, additive for cement. And if you look again at the three plot uh, for cement, uh, then you see the both fields uh, for uh, fly ash, fluke ash in Germany and Bozellans uh, and the points uh, show the pos uh, position of different clay bricks. Uh, and I think mm, there is hope that some of these clay bricks can work uh, uh, as mm, uh, addition for uh, cement or uh, concrete. We start a, a project and uh, we are not at the end. Uh, but you know, I show you only one example uh, that means the uh, dependence between the uh, portion or content of uh, the uh, particles lower than 10 micron in the brick powder and the uh, 90 uh, days compressive strength. Uh, the Portland cement or the cement which we um, uh, used for the test uh, has a, a content of uh, 25 mass percent of brick powder. And you see that with increasing portions of portion of fine uh, materials, the uh, uh, strength is uh, also uh, uh, increase uh, is, uh, or is also increasing. That means we uh, need a high uh, uh, fineness uh, to use this uh, uh, brick powder uh, as uh, additive for concrete or cement. But the good news is compared, for instance, with the sand of concrete rubber, the grindability of uh, brick is much more better. That means it's needed in a energy is uh, lower. More uh, detailed uh, information are in the in the paper. I named it the set uh, and we will uh, work on this uh, project or on this idea in the next uh, project. So the last slide, the summary. Uh, uh, coarse uh, concrete recycled aggregates, uh, there mm, is the state of the knowledge uh, sufficient for uh, the use in road construction as well as uh, for the use as a recycled aggregate uh, in concrete. Yes, I know a researcher always want to uh, research, uh, research more and more and more in detail, but I think we can use this material uh, as well and as in road construction as in concrete. Uh, nevertheless, the transfer to practice is uh, still slow, and I think public uh, clients must take over a peacemaker role that is necessary, and then it uh, becomes uh, reality step by step. 
the uh, fine concrete or recycled aggregates for this material, uh, we uh, have to develop solutions for application. The uh, mixed uh, uh, masonry rubble is uh, suitable as raw material for the production of lightweight aggregates. Uh, we have successful production in a pilot plan. The first results on uh, application for brick rubble as partial raw material uh, substitute for the manufacturing uh, of brick or a supplementary uh, cementitious ma uh, material demonstrate at the time only the feasibility. We need further uh, research, uh, especially to the recovery of fine pure uh, brick particles with a rare earth, uh, earth roll separator. And this uh, research starts in the next months. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay. Dear Annette, thank you very much for your inspiring lecture. Professor Annette is a former professor from Bauhaus University and a senior scientist at Weimar Institute of Applied Construction Research in Germany and a great partner of us here from USP and a Brazil too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Annette. I, I, I would like to say a few words. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, and I'm very glad that uh, your process of lightweight aggregates is now in a pilot plant. So mm -hmm. you show we show us about the how how long he, and the necessary feasibility to produce a, a such industrial product. And uh, I, I, we also thank you to receive us as uh, mm -hmm. PhD uh, students after the PhD postdoc students uh, in Bauhaus. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Please.